Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're actually going to be going back to the House of Commons today because Trudeau made a appearance there, which is surprising since Wednesdays are typically his day that he goes there. Now, there's a bit of a back and forth between uh, Trudeau and Pierre, but I just want you to listen to all of the gaslighting that Trudeau does throughout this little clip here. Because of the incompetence of this Prime Minister and Liberal City Hall in Toronto, rent there has more than doubled over the last nine years. What's worse is that the Prime Minister's so-called Housing Accelerator Fund has given a half billion dollars to Toronto, and only months later, the politicians in that city hiked up wow. home building taxes by 20%. Wow. Now 30% of all home building costs is government taxes alone. Why does the Prime Minister keep sending our money to build bureaucracies that block homes? Hey, hey, hey. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, we see the Conservative leader's hypocrisy on full display. Let's talk about their housing proposal, which the Conservative leader has been delaying debate on for months because he knows it's not ambitious enough. His proposal won't build homes fast enough, doesn't reach enough cities, and creates unnecessary bureaucracy. The Conservative leader would also rip up the 179 housing accelerator agreements and put the GST back on a part construction. His clear lack of ambition on housing is partly how we ended up here in the first place. Here, here. Right. Honourable Leader of the Opposition. When I was Housing Minister, we built 200,000 homes in one year. Wow. The rent was only $900 and mortgage payments were half of what they are today. Fast forward to present, the Prime Minister wants to give a, has given a half billion dollars to, to Toronto City Hall to jack up new taxes on home building. No wonder that when the president of the Residential Construction Council of Ontario, Richard Lyle, was asked whether the Prime Minister would keep his promise for 3.9 million new homes by the end of the decade, he said, and I quote, no chance. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, why doesn't he stop funding bureaucracy so that we can get out of the way and build homes? Yeah. The right Honourable Prime Minister. Shameful again that the Conservative leader continues to exploit the very real anxieties of Canadians. When the Conservative leader was Housing Minister, uh, let's talk about his record. He withdrew the government from cooperative housing. He supported the construction of zero new apartments and he gutted affordable housing initiatives and created new bureaucracies. His housing proposal today continues to fall short. The Conservative leader is simply all slogans and no answers. Right. This guy is just delusional. He's saying that all Pierre has is slogans and no actions. Well, this guy doesn't even have slogans and he has no actions whatsoever. He keeps trying to put all these announcements forward, these housing accelerators, which aren't doing anything. As Pierre said, he's dumping all this money into Toronto and Toronto is just becoming a shithole. Uh, there's been reports, uh, which Pierre's going to touch upon, on the encampment situation. But just a week ago, a report came out saying this about these encampments and how Toronto's not actually going to be doing much about it now. They are a visible presence in parks across the city. Homeless encampments are something city officials have been dealing with for several years. And today, they announced a new strategy. The city says removing them will not be a priority going forward. Rather, providing enhanced supports will to help people find shelter and stable housing. CTV's Beth McDonnell is live tonight with more on this. Beth. Michelle, Nathan, the city says this shift in its approach to encampments is based on feedback from the public and the city's ombudsman. Instead of clearing homeless encampments, a new City of Toronto report recommends a housing first, human rights based approach. The clearings um, is not a strategy that works. It removes people from one place um, and to go where? This is what Clarence Square Park near Spadina and Front is like now. The city says with a lack of mental health care services, a lack of housing and high rent costs, more people are struggling on the streets. Now let me tell you, if I lived at Spadina and Front, I'd be looking to move as soon as possible. That looks like a complete nightmare and eyesore. And not to mention, I couldn't even use the park with my kids, my friends, my family. Uh, that poses a huge safety concern as well. 
And I get it, these guys have nowhere else to go. If you kick them out, they'll just have to find a new park or a new location. But as you heard at the end of that report, they said it was due to mental health, a lack of housing, and increased rents. And we've all seen the rents, they're astronomical right now. But as Pierre stated, they just got half a billion dollars, Toronto, for this housing accelerator program that uh, Trudeau's been announcing and are now increasing the building tax by 20%, which is kind of strange when Trudeau's trying to promise 4 million houses by 2020, uh, 2031, which when we broke down the math already in a previous video, that's almost two houses a minute for the next seven years straight, which is not possible at all. But of course Trudeau finds someone else to blame for this, as always, and here you are going to hear him say that now. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. My common sense plan to build the homes would reward municipalities that speed up permits and, and punish the, the politicians that get in the way. His approach has not only doubled housing costs, but he's built up Toronto City Hall with monstrous financial transfers so that they can block construction. Mr. Speaker, there have been 50 new tent encampments added in the City of Toronto in six weeks. Wow. There are 250 tent cities in Toronto alone. Is that his plan to block homes and put up tents? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the so-called plan that the Conservative leader has put forward on housing does absolutely nothing to address homelessness or encampments. What we're actually investing in is hundreds of millions of dollars to help municipalities across the country uh, build more housing rapidly, create the wraparound supports necessary to support people uh, facing homelessness, and continue to be there on the most ambitious and comprehensive housing plan that this country has ever seen. Uh, this is part of what uh, we're having having to make up for the lost years in which he was housing minister 10 years ago, not creating housing for Canadians, not investing in our future. <laughs> uh, but of course, 10 years ago, I'm sure you all guessed it. Harper, Harper, Harper. That's all this guy ever says. Even though he's openly admitted that after being in power for eight plus years, it's kind of hard to blame them for your own mistakes. Investing ambitiously in housing is something that this government is absolutely doing. Uh, I, you know, once you've been in power for you know, eight plus years, it becomes harder and harder to blame the previous guys for, uh, for challenges you're facing. So he's actually aware of this, yet continues to do that when he's the one who just let in 1.5 million people, immigrants, into the country last year alone, even after he made this announcement earlier again this year about how it's getting out of control. However, over the past few years, we've seen a massive spike in temporary immigration whether it's temporary foreign workers uh, or uh, whether it's international students in particular that have uh, grown at a rate far beyond uh, what uh, Canada has uh, been able to absorb. Uh, to give an example, in 2017, 2% 2 of Canada's population was made up by, of temporary immigrants. Now, we're at 7.5% of our population comprised of temporary immigrants. That's something uh, that we need to get back under control. And to me, this all coincides with our previous video that we just covered on the whole immigrant situation, where you have Trudeau saying all of that at that live announcement. And then just a few days ago, we have Mark Miller coming out and saying that they're going to be trying to make a process so that non-Canadian citizens can get citizenship for just being in Canada for three years and proving that they've been here. And now we have these different organizations and groups coming out demanding that undocumented people get rights in Canada. So I'm here today to uh, show union solidarity with undocumented workers and their families, women, 2SL, LGBTQI, plus migrants, all who have been living in fear of being detected and being deported. Undocumented people live here and build our communities and our economy. But without status, they are vulnerable to abuse and exploitation. And growing racism and xenophobia are making them even more vulnerable. 
Employers can violate their rights of undocumented workers, stealing wages, forcing them into unsafe working conditions, stopping workers from asserting their rights under the threat of deportation. The, this abuse results in an overall worsening of wages and working conditions for migrants and citizens alike. Regularization will allow workers to leave bad jobs and punish bad actors. It's leveling the playing field of improving working conditions for everyone. That is why in 2019, we as the CLC and our affiliated unions launched a small pilot to give permanent residency to undocumented workers in the greater Toronto area. A broad regularization program means that people can now contribute to the fullest potential to Canada's economic and social future. We, the Canadian Labour Congress, call on the government to do what is right. Bring in regularization now. Thank you. It's absolutely nuts that this lady can come out here and talk about requesting regularization for undocumented Ill illegal immigrants. They're undocumented. They're illegal. They should not be here. They should not have the rights that you're trying to request them to have. If they want rights, they can go through the proper process of becoming a Canadian citizen. And if your visa expires, sorry, ta-ta, you gotta go. Trying to give these guys permanent residence makes absolutely no sense when all we're talking about is how we're in a housing crisis. Nobody can get a house, afford a house. There's not enough supply. So what are we going to do? Bring all these people in to join these encampments that are happening? And also, this would not happen in another country. You would not have, uh, say, Indian people going up and talking to the parliament and saying, oh, we need to regularize these uh, foreign Canadians. <laughs> like, why do we accept this? Why do we allow this to happen? I, it just blows my mind. But anyways, that's just my opinion as always. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.